So our project started when one of the guys that is actually here, he's a, he asked me a question about three years ago and he said, do you reckon you can 3D print fins? Now, 3D printing is one of my specialties as a researcher. So in the last couple of years, we have designed and worked on 3D printing fins. And specifically, what we've developed is what we call a performance feedback loop. So it starts on a computer where we use computer-aided design to design our fins. They then move on to the next phase where we use additive manufacturing or 3D printing to print the fins. Then we use computational fluid dynamics to look at how do these fins behave under simulated conditions. So we haven't even put the fin in the water yet, but we use computer simulation to find out what is the flow around this fin. What are the pressures on the fin? How do they perform? What is the hold of the water on it? Then we test them in a the laboratory and we look at what is the flex? How stiffness are they? Can they flex? How much pressure can you put on them? Then we put them in the hands of surfers who then go out to what we call ocean laboratories. And there's no better place to, for an ocean laboratory than to come here to Macaroni's. So we selected Macaroni's because we are looking for a wave that always breaks in the same spot, a near mechanical wave. Now, Macaroni's is well known for the quality of the wave, the consistent of the swell, but it also has a reef bottom, which means it always breaks roughly in that same area. And that takes one of the variables out of our project, because one of the things we do in this project is we calculate what power there is in the ocean. So we can do that on a beach break conditions back in Australia, but we can't really work out what the power is of the wave that is breaking on the bank because the bank keeps shifting. Whereas if we now go back to Indonesia and we come to Macaroni's, because the bottom is always the same and the wave always breaks roughly under the same conditions, we can now calculate the power in the ocean and use that as an input parameter into our testing. So everybody is surfing with two different types of watches that gives us GPS information, speed information, how many, what the length is of your ride. And then in addition, inside the board, we have accelerometers and gyroscopes embedded that tell us at each specific point, what is the angle of the board, what is the speed. And that allows us to calculate things such as speed, power and flow. We have developed three different prototypes that we're testing here. One is a smooth fin, one is what we call a crinkle cut fin, which is like your crinkle cut that you get in chips, and then we have a double crinkle cut fin that we're testing. And we're comparing that against a standard fin from one of the manufacturers. We're comparing it to a futures fin, and we're comparing this to an FCS2 fin. is at the moment is finding out a lot of differences between the fins so we've got some um, commercial fins and some fins that, that the university have made up um, and a lot of the, the data we're gathering is going to see if we can tell if we can tell between the fins or um, how much difference we, we have in that between our surfing and, and also our mental perception of Be still Until you're 
your heart turns from red to green You're in a hurry to get behind the screen But you can't do it with your head So my part is to actually do the testing, to surf the fins, to see if I can feel differences between different templates, different uh, materials, commercial, non-commercial fins, and also between FCS or future fins. We've collected way more data than we needed, We've collected just I think almost 500 waves now that are really useful so it's it's been amazing yeah it's been perfect on your heartbeat but there is no space for us to need why you feel it if you're ready